before I start, I would like to give a special thank you to um, several groups of people. First of all, um, the NANOC staff. Um, it was a Herculean effort to pull off our own virtual platform in such a compressed period of time. And all of us band together, worked hard to deliver uh, this platform that you're experiencing today. And then secondly, to the program committee. Um, this team is amazing. They have worked very, very hard to deliver this programming to you. They have um, committed themselves in ways that um, and go above and beyond uh, duty for those who are volunteers, and we really appreciate their efforts. And then Revsys, our development partner, who helped us put together this uh, this experience that you're having. And um, a great team. They work hand in hand with us, and it's been a pleasure working with them. The Hamilton Group, who helps support our meetings, who are manning the support lines for you, uh, and in, in an indelible part of our team. And then Clarity Systems, who are coordinating all the videos and what's happening in the background. We could not have delivered this without them. So let me start by talking about the virtual platform. Um, our virtual platform provides services that meet the needs of our community. Uh, we wanted to focus on something that was unique to us, that would serve our needs, and we will continue to expand this program over time. It allows us to expand Nanox's reach, it allows for greater access to our content tools and, it's, uh, and our resources. It also gives us an opportunity for real-time engagement and connect with, um, with the greater NANOC community. Um, during um, my, um, the Women in Tech meeting and also during the newcomers, I had the experience of a young women lady who came from Kenya to join as part of our NANOC facilities. There was another woman who came from Chile to join us. And uh, during the hackathon, there was a gentleman that came from South Africa. Um, that global reach, that global perspective helped helps diversify our community and helps to make our community stronger. So I want to talk a little bit about our future tech initiatives. We're going to continue to improve our meeting tools. We're going to provide um, enhancements to our virtual meeting experience. We're going to be developing SSO for all Nanog services. Um, we're going to be focusing on a streamlined and mobile and uh, uh, friendly event registration process. That is one that um, Nanog owns, so this data is not shared with anyone. And just as a caveat to know, we, show, we share our data with no one. We don't collect financial information and we don't share with sponsors or anyone else. Your data is safe and protected. We only collect enough just to support your process and being part of our NANOC community. Um, we're going to be also redesigning a meeting appointment tool. Um, we've already got a, a, a group of people that start out. We're going to be evaluating and telling us what, what they want. Um, we're looking for volunteers in the community who want to be part of that process in developing a meeting appointment tool. So if you're interested, just send an e uh, just connect on our website to feedback and uh, let us know, or just send an email to feedback at nanog.org. Uh, we're also going to be releasing a project uh, tracking and request system to en enable our community to be able to make requests of us and then to track how those requests are moving forward. And then lastly, we're going to be working on an initiative of, of presenting a modern community forum. So what does that modern community forum look like? Um, we're going to be experimenting with discourse. Um, we're starting out a kind of an evaluation process. When we were looking at um, developing and releasing a modern community forum, we were looking at certain key features. One, it needed to be collaborative, uh, allowing our community and encouraging conversation. We need to have a modern interface that's uh, support for file attachments, videos, media, and et cetera. Uh, searchable discussions. Um, right now, Mailman is a great resource, but it's it's really hard to search and find things within that. Uh, customizable uh, integration with popular third-party apps, um, social media, having features such as voting, polling, checklists, and more. Open source, it's essential that the NANOC community owns our data and that data is not in the hands of third parties. And then accessible, um, accessible by email, um, desktop browsers, and mobile devices. So how will we use this for? Um, we want to focus on categories that allow us to expand our community. Um, right now, Mailman is a great tool. And the trouble is it's, it's, it's a device that one size just doesn't always fit all. Um, we want to have categories such as general technical discussions, events and social gathering, uh, peering forums, 
um, diversity in tech, women in tech, LBGTQ plus issues, and we can nest categories. So there could be an overarching category of diversity in tech, and then subcategories that sit inside of it. Um, mentorship forums, allowing us to be able to focus and help and continue to support people when they come to NANOG and become part of the community to have ongoing support to help mentor these people to become the future network engineers. Uh, student forums, uh, private forums that focus for support for the uh, staff, board, and the PC. Uh, community requests, and also job openings. So what's our timeline? Staff, board, and existing community members will evaluate the proof of concept. Uh, we'll be starting shortly after this meeting um, finishes. Um, then there'll be a call to members and community to part participate in a, a broader test. Um, then we'll have a comment period for members and general discussion and announcement, and then we'll make an announcement to our community. Um, and then we'll also execute a plan platform loss. So how will this look? How will this all come about? Well, the community is going to be a part of defining what that is. We've selected a platform that we're experimenting with, and then we're going to uh, get the staff, PC board, collaborate, make decisions, decide how they see it best function. We're then going to stand out to the community and develop a program that works for the needs of our community and not just for a particular few. So um, NANOG 81 will be virtual. Um, our top priority is the health and safety of the NANOG community. NANOG is following the guide size of infectious disease experts. The decision to go virtual gives our community a chance to plan ahead. We are committed to ensuring that all NANOG virtual events are accessible and welcome to all. We see this virtual platform as an extension of who we are as an organization, allowing us to reach those who typically we could not have reached with face-to-face -face meeting alone. So we have a strong commitment to it. We'll continue to evolve the platform. And again, NANOG 81 will be virtual, again, in an effort to secure that our community is safe and that we can still continue to deliver content. So I want to close my little section about talking about Nanoc stories. We have a feature set within our um, online website and it's designed to showcase and highlight our community. We want to be able to promote those people in our community who are helping to improve the, the internet, who are helping to improve our communities. And um, you can see those reflected on our website. So Nanoc stories, you can find articles. Uh, we just recently had a series which is on uh, Nanoc TV called Women in Tech. It features internet interviews for some of the um, prominent women in our community. Um, we just released an article um, connecting networks across borders in the world. It's a conversation with Alejandro Marino and Joel uh, uh, Pacheco, um, learning how uh, to learn in school and in the job, a conversation with Eddie Metzger and uh, Lionel Sume both of which who were um, a part of our NANOG uh, College Immersion Program. And then Cyber Warriors for Tribal Broadband, um, who's helping uh, transform our country? A conversation with Matt Rettman. So with that, I'll pass it on to Kat, um, and she will talk about NANOG Program Outreach. Hi, good morning and good afternoon, and thanks for joining us today. And Edward, thank you. Um, I and a group of dedicated individuals on the program committee are looking at outreach events, and we're actually excited to take advantage of the virtual tools that NANOG is utilizing. And we're hoping to schedule regular events, mainly targeting uh, students, uh, universities, colleges, and we're hoping to branch out to community colleges as well. We really want to inspire and get more students into network engineering and also help them see that there's a wide diversity of jobs in tech alone. We are um, starting in November with a careers in tech panel, and we hope to expand this also into tutorials. We have a few on DNS. We're hoping for IPv6. So something that'll show the students the quality that we have and the resources available through NANOG. So it will be designed for undergrad and grad students. And these virtual sessions will be anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. And we want to give the students a chance to ask questions. And we're also hoping to reach out to the NANOG community for resources. So this is really important. If you would like to do one of these virtual webinars and have the opportunity to teach, educate, and reach students and encourage them to join NANOG, we would love to hear from you. Some of the sample topics, again, DNS, IPv6, careers in tech, but if there's other avenues and other topics you'd like to cover, please, again, we need volunteers. We also really want to reach out to the community today. 
to say, we would love to see what contacts you have at colleges and universities you may work at, ones that you attended, ones that are in your community or that you've partnered with in your career. We would love to hear about contacts. And we've already had a few people reach out and introduce us to their professors, the dean of the colleges. And we're looking across discipline as well because we need a diversity of thought in tech, not just diversity. So if you have any suggestions or if you'd like to join one of our webinars or be on a panel, or if you have anybody that you'd like to offer up as a contact, we'd really appreciate to hear from you. And please shoot us an email at outreach at nanog.org. Thank you for your time today. All right. I'm Kat Grinsky at the program committee. I'm the program committee secretary. I'm going to talk to you about some of the uh, lessons learned we got from all of these virtual meetings um, for Nanoc 79 and 80. So Nanoc 79 was our completely first virtual meeting, as you all know. Um, we used Digitel as our vendor for that one. Uh, it was a great experience. We got a lot of good feedback. Um, one of the downsides was we hosted it on their website. Um, so a lot of people Going to go back and forth between the agenda on our site and over to Digitel. But overall, it was a really good experience. However, we couldn't use them for Nanog 80 since they had a conflict of dates for their booking. So we ended up switching to Clarity, which is who we're using right now. Um, this change also allowed us to embed everything in the website. So now you no longer had to go to a second location, which I think was a very big win for Nanog. And uh, one of the feedbacks we had gotten during Nanog 79 was that everyone wanted a persistent chat because in Nanog 79, every time a new speaker came on, the chat reset. And we were able to provide this uh, feature in Nanog 80 by having everything incorporated into our own website. And as you all heard today, Nanog 81 will also be all virtual and we will continue to use Clarity probably going forward. Um, but the most important part to take away is that everything will always now be on our website, integrated into our Nanog site. So it allows us to have a lot more control and keep the experience easier for all of you uh, interacting with it. Okay, next. Uh, for presentations, um, as you may have noticed, we pre-recorded as many talks as possible. This is one of the few live talks um, that you're listening to right now, but almost everything else you're seeing today, yesterday, and Monday were all pre-recorded. The best part about this is it lets us know exactly how long the talk is, um, so we can have a very concise and well-populated agenda that is much more accurate than in the live versions where we're not 100% sure. Are you going to take 20 minutes of your 30-minute slot? Will you take 35 minutes of your 30 minute slot? Sometimes we're never sure with the live versions. And we know that for a fact a couple of weeks before because we pre record everything early enough. So then we can have a much more concise agenda for published for all of you watching virtually. And that's probably been the biggest benefit of the pre recorded talks for us. However, to achieve this, this does require us to have the talks not only submitted, but also voted on earlier. And then we also have to have final slides done weeks before the conference. Um, because they need to be approved and recorded before the conference ever airs. So the best part of our rolling submission process means you can submit really early now. So just a friendly reminder from myself to all of you, uh, you can submit for N plus two. So if the next Nanog is Nanog 81, you can submit for 81, 82, and 83. So submit early. Yes, thank you, Ken. <laughs> so you'll collapse over there. <laughs> we love if you submit early. You know, if you work for an employer that requires a lot of extra approvals, for example, myself is one of those employers, you know, submit for two nanogs ahead then so that you have the time to go through all of the hoops and not have to stress out about that for the next nanog. You know, if you need help and you're not sure how to present something or how to, to draft everything, submit early, get a shepherd from the program committee assigned to you. We'll work one-on-one -on -one with you. We'll help you create the entire presentation, not the technical aspects, that's up to you. But we will help you through the process and figuring out the best way to craft your presentations. And then we can get you voted on nice and early. And if you're voted on early, you'll get into the agenda, you'll get recorded, we'll be good to go. All right, next. Um, we've learned a lot of lessons recording for the last two nanogs. Um, so number one, um, my, my lesson learned was ring lights are great. They help your face look a lot more natural um, and less dark and backlit and all sorts of funky things. Yeah, lighting is very important. Um, so if you'll be recording for us at a future nanog, I highly recommend a, a ring light or something similar or just a very good you know, natural lighting in your room. And you definitely wanna avoid being backlit because then that'll give you a very dark face if you don't have any sort of front, front lighting. Uh, microphones are also very important. Um, 
a cheap microphone may not do good echo cancellation, noise cancellation. You might be able to hear the rest of the household while you're doing your talk. Um, so it's very good to test out your microphone and make sure that you can be heard well. And then um, the obvious one that we always remind people at in, in person and in movie theaters, et cetera, silence your devices. We don't want to hear them beeping in the middle of your recording. It, it's happened numerous times. Thankfully, again, when we're pre-recording, we can edit it later so we can just cut that out, start over, and you're fine. But it's much smoother if we don't have to cut out bits of doo-doo, doo-doo. So silence devices. And then lastly, this is the harder one to control, obviously. Remind your family members and possibly pets, maybe lock them out, to be quiet while you're recording so we don't get photobombed by a cat walking in or a puppy jumping up. So all, all sorts of fun things we're learning during COVID while we pre-record talks. Um, as you may notice from my background, we've been creating virtual backgrounds for the last two nanogs. Um, so we always provide those um, free to our presenters if they would wish to use them. Or if they prefer to just use their natural backgrounds, that's fine too. Or a different, you know, non-vendor specific background is also acceptable. So, um, and then the nice thing we do with Zoom is that we record all the talks on Zoom, which gives us the presenter view, the gallery view, uh, speaker and presenter. So we get these three different views and then we can edit them together in a really nice way for the way you see. So it doesn't just look like you're watching Zoom. It actually looks like a professional uh, video because it is because we are editing them. We're not just taking it raw from Zoom over to the, the live presentation. All right, and next. The other big thing that we've done the last two nanogs has been our lunchtime socials virtually. So normally the newcomers lunch, the women in tech lunch, and the <clears throat> birds of a feather breakouts would all be in-person events for you at Nanog. Um, so we've been using Zoom to do this. Um, in Nanog 79, you were assigned to breakout rooms and you couldn't move on your own. This is a limitation of Zoom, not something that we wanted to impose on you. Um, and so that was, you know, it worked, but did people did say that they want to be able to move rooms if possible. And, and we just couldn't unless you asked the, the moderator to do that for you. One thing we completely forgot about for Nanog 79 was scheduling real breaks where you could actually leave your computer type of real break. And I personally was finding like, I'd have to leave the previous session about five minutes early, make a sandwich, shove it down my throat, and then run back so that I could sit there on the, the lunchtime social. And that just for everybody was not a very good idea. So for Nanog 80, you may have noticed we've got these nice 30 minute breaks before and after um, the lunchtime socials. So we can all be humans and we can eat and we can visit our restrooms and whatever else we need to take care of. Say hi to the kids, you know. So that was a big change we made sure to schedule in for Nanog 80. Um, and then Zoom was very nice and they updated on, um, so client version 5.3.0, which was released a month ago, added the ability that we all wanted to be able to freely move between breakout rooms. So for those of you the newcomers um, and the women in tech the last two days, you may have noticed that if you hovered over, it's kind of a hidden feature, but if you hover over the number of people in a breakout room, there is now an option that says join and you can actually jump between rooms now. So that was very nice for those of us that want to move around like we would in normal real life meetings. All right, one more slide. And then we've also been getting feedback. So we're always open to suggestions, um, bug reports, feature requests. Um, some of the things I've heard so far this week have been um, that people would love the ability to pop out the, the chat or the video or both um, out of the browser um, just for easier moving it around on their screens. Um, several people have mentioned wanting a, a local time zone aware agenda. So these are some of the ideas that we've been hearing. I cannot promise you that they will happen because I am not the developer. I do not write the code, but we will definitely be researching them and seeing if we can make some of these ideas happen. If you have any additional thoughts that you would like to present to us, um, please put those in your survey results. We personally in the program committee read everything in those survey results. So I cannot impress upon you um, strongly enough that put your feedback in there. Myself and the rest of the program committee will be reading that. Um, and like I said, whether it's a feature request or a bug, everything is welcome. So thank you. So hello everyone, um, I'm Edward, I'm back. Um, I have a few poll questions that I would like to ask the community to get us some feedback on kind of how we're doing with a few things. So um, if you could um, go to a browser and pop into pollev.com slash nanog, or you can also kind of join by phone as well, and we'll pop into our first uh, survey question. So now I'll give you a, a bit of time to connect in. 
and to start to pop in your responses. Hopefully this all works in real time and you'll be able to see the results as you guys are all kind of uh, chiming in. Um, so the first question is, how do you feel about our virtual platform? Um, a, is it great? B, it's okay, but could use some fine tuning. Um, C, could use some serious improvements. Um, and D, I don't like it. So um, we're really striving to be able to uh, deliver a platform that meets the need of our community. And in this process, we're going to need uh, feedback. We're going to need, you know, to see what your opinions, how you feel, et cetera. So um, it's actually been um, a lot of fun, a lot of work. Um, we had uh, originally worked with Digitel for Nanog 79, and um, it was good, but um, there were some requests from the community and some things that really kind of weren't working well. So the decision was made to um, kind of roll one of our own. So uh, from Nanog 79 to Nanog um, 80 that you're experiencing now, this was kind of a focus on delivering us to you. So um, and again, any feedback, um, we really appreciate it. Um, in the next slide, I'll be asking um, a few additional questions. And in the third slide, I mean, it's going to be free form. You'll be able to just say what features you're looking for. What, what would you want to see Nanog delivering for you as a community? So we'll take a few minutes to, um, or, uh, to get some uh, our feedback through this, and then we'll kind of advance to uh, the next slide. Sadly to say that when I do advance to the next slide, this one will be locked out. Only one poll can be active um, at a time. Getting some good responses. Okay. So, um, well, at least nobody hated it. So we did something right. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to now advance to the next polling question. Thank you all for your feedback. If it wants to advance, hold on. Okay. Oh, there we go. So, um, what development initiatives do you feel are most important right now? Um, a better um, meeting appointment tool, um, a public uh, tracking system for Nanoc projects, um, SSO for Nanoc services, an improved meeting registration process. What do you think are the most important things um, to you right now? That's great. This is all very, very helpful to us, especially getting real-time feedback. Nice. And we'll give this a few minutes for everyone to kind of um, pop in their opinions. Looks like we have a, a three-way horse race going on right now, so. <laughs> And as a reminder that we're always opening and listening, um, I check my email um, daily, almost hourly. Uh, so anything that you uh, request that you have, anything going on, just pop in feedback at nanog.org. It's a button that sits in the upper uh, right-hand corner of, the, of our website. Um, it's an email address that, that's out and available. And um, um, our, our, our team reads those emails and we try to respond as quickly as we can. Okay, um, it looks like we've gotten some good feedback here. So I will then um, jump out to the, um, the last question. All right, so what new projects did Nanog undertake? This is just write in what you think. What new pro pro projects should Nanog undertake for our community?
Nice. Yeah, these are really helpful. Yeah. I'm sensing a theme, yeah. Edward Trent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but these are all the things we need to know. Um, we don't want to work yes. in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. this, we, we are focusing on our community. And this kind of information helps us know where to point our North Star to create um, community services that are meaningful to our organization. Yeah, Kat, we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we will keep You're this all going. going. To keep us very busy. Yeah, yes. we will. We've got a, um, a couple of more minutes until we're, um, the hour is, uh, should I say, the, the section is up for us. We'll let this continue to go and kind of roll across the screen until that um, takes place. Again, thank you all so much for um, the feedback. Thank you for contributing, being part of our community. Um, we can't do this without you. We are really about trying to serve you in the best ways that we can. Um, and this, this feedback is just essential. Thank you. I'm going to have to tally up the number of times tutorials has been said. Yes. With this. <laughs> yeah. Very excited to see outreach. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and there's more outreach. <laughs> yeah. We do have a member's blog. If you want, if you have anything that you want to blog about, anything you want to talk about, reach out to us um, and we will um, um, help make that happen. We're always looking for content. We're always looking for members who want to take and uh, collaborate and share information. So just please reach out. That would be good. <laughs> Okay, I think we're um, uh, we're doing on time. Okay, I want this roll as long as we can. And again, if you're not seeing your request popping up on the screen, um, or if you're uh, someone who's actually watching this on video two, three weeks from now, please reach out to us at feedback.nanoc.org. We, uh, we look forward to seeing your comments, um, good or bad. We, we need to know. Um, again, we don't want to work on, in a vacuum. We're here to support a broad community, and we're looking to see that we continue to make sure that everyone has a voice in Nanoc. So uh, if you don't feel you're being represented in these things which are popping up, please Please just reach out to us at feedback.nanoc.org and we are happy to, uh, to hear from you. All right. Thank you guys all again for participating in uh, Nanog Virtual um, 80. Um, I look forward to um, sharing with you guys all again when we reach Nanog 81 um, in February. So thank you again. I appreciate all of your time and all of your commitment to our organization. Thanks. Have a wonderful rest of the meeting. Thanks, everyone.